Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Good morning, afternoon, evening or night or whatever time you happen to be watching this fellow YouTubes. It's me, Cool Dude Clem, and today I'm going to make a microphone preamp that has both low cut and high cut filters, uses a 741 op amp and runs on a single rail power supply. This is what a 741 op amp looks like and this is what it looks like in a schematic. As you can see there are only five pins shown. Got your positive supply pin, negative supply pin, inverting input, non-inverting input and of course your output. And the other three pins aren't going to be used so they're not shown here. This might look a little bit confusing at this point but I'm going to show you the simplest circuit you can build using an op amp. And here it is. As you can see there are only three other components needed. These two capacitors here and these three resistors here. Your input goes in through this capacitor here, your output comes out through this capacitor here. And these three resistors here are for keeping the circuit running stable and setting the gain. Now I don't know how much gain I'm going to need in my preamp so I'm going to say around 30 that should be enough so the next thing to do is pick the resistors that I'm going to need and the easiest way to do this is have R1 at 1k and then the value of R2 really just depends on how much gain you want so let's say if you want a gain of 11 you'd put a 10k resistor there if you want a gain of let's say 23 you'd put a 22k resistor there if you want a gain of 48 you'd put a 47k resistor there you can see where that's going for my amplifier I would need a 29k resistor here and I don't have any of those so I'll put a 27k in instead and that will give my amplifier a gain of about 28 which is pretty much what I want the last thing to do is set this resistor here and it really isn't critical what value you put in there anything from 10k to 100k should work so I'm going to make this 100k and now I'm going to have a little think and come up with something um, um. well had a think and this is the design I've come up with now to start off with I've decided to make this run from a single rail supply I prefer those because they're more easier to work with as you can see the basic elements are still here still got the 27k resistor here and the 1k resistor here to set the gain but as this design runs from a single rail supply this op amp is not going to work unless there is half the supply voltage on the non-inverting input so what I've done is I've put 22k resistor here between the ground and the non-inverting input and another 22k resistor here between the positive and the non-inverting input and that will set the voltage here to about 6 volts and with that the op amp should work with absolutely no problems and amplify just fine over here we've got my filters I've got the low cut and the high cut filters anyway I'm tired of looking at schematics now and I'm pretty sure you are so I'm gonna get on and build something okay and here are all my parts all laid out ready to use got my capacitors got my resistors got a little piece of board to put it on which is probably too small but you'd be surprised at how small I can make these things so should be able to get that to all fit on there got the IC socket a couple of switches this one's a little bit damaged actually I don't know if you can see that it's got a bit of a crack on it but I tested it and it seems to be okay and of course the 741 op amp itself now um I don't know if I'm um I don't know what the hell's going on outside but there's some weird thumping noise and you can hear some people talking I don't know what the hell that is but still I think we need to get animal control in or something anyway going to need something to hold it in with so this is my vice which I'm going to screw onto the shelf I 
can't understand a word of what they're saying. They might just as well be going hubbada 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 Because nobody in this country seems to speak English anymore. Some kind of weird slang they all speak now, which I have absolutely no idea how to speak, but still. Got my vice ready. Gonna put the little bit of circuit board in here. Which, actually, I just need to make sure which way the tracks are going. Because I need to lay it this way. And I'm going to place all the components around the IC socket. Make sure everything is put in its right place. Solder it up. Put the chip in and see if it works. Okay, it's a couple of hours of soldering later. So let's see what I've produced. Bet you're surprised to see all those parts on that little tiny board, but I did it. Even has one more part on it than I started out with, and that's this resistor here. Also, I changed this capacitor here to a non-electrolytic, that's a, that's a 104, so that's a 100 nanofarad capacitor. It's that capacitor there, I changed it from a 2.2 microfarad to a 100 nanofarad non-electrolytic, because I want this to work with a condenser microphone, so although it's not shown in the schematic, there's a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor connecting the positive to the microphone connection. And I don't know if there's going to be more voltage on this side of the capacitor or this side. So I've put in a non-electrolytic 100 nanofarad capacitor and we'll see how that works. I know on the schematic it looks like I've used non-electrolytic capacitors already, but I forgot to tell the computer that they were electrolytics, so that's why none of these have any polarizing marks on them, but still got a little bit of work to do. Still got to put the circuit brakes in, or track brakes, or whatever you want to call them. You can see that to save some space, I've soldered one of the resistors onto the back. And made one little mistake here with this capacitor here, this sort of pinkish orangey one. That is not supposed to be permanently connected. That's supposed to be in series with a switch and I forgot that so I've got to go and fix that. But anyway, I'm just going to do all that and I'll come back and show you what I've done. It's a little bit more later on now, in fact, it's the next day because it was night time when I was recording the previous part of this video and it's now daytime. But anyway, with all that aside, and the fact that it's nice and quiet outside today, so I can concentrate on this more, you can clearly see that I have put the wires on. Got the input and the output wires. Actually, I think this one's the input and this one's the output. Also got the positive and negative. Got to make sure I don't get those ones mixed up. And you can also see that I've now put the switches on. And you might be able to see on this one that I have taken that capacitor out of there and soldered it in series with the switch. And there's one little thing which I forgot to mention about the schematic. That's that I couldn't find any 22k resistors to put here because I thought I had a whole bunch of them somewhere but they seem to have disappeared so I've used 47k's instead. But I don't really think that will make any difference. Should still work the same. All I've got to do now is make those little track brakes and that will be when I can find my drill which seems to have gone on a walkabout and I have no idea where it's gone. I've got the holes drilled now for the track brakes. I mean the circuit brakes or whatever you want to call them. But before I put the chip in I'm going to test the voltages to make sure they're all good. Now I've got this powered up at the moment without the chip. Let's just see what the supply voltage is. It should be about 12 volts. Okay, we've got 12.8 volts there. Let's check that he's getting into the supply pin, which is this bit right here. Don't know if you can see what I'm doing. Let's see, we should have that there. Okay, we've got 12.8 volts at what will be pin 7. Pin 6, we shouldn't have anything. Okay, got a little bit of voltage there, but it's dropping. Probably just a charged capacitor. Okay, we shouldn't have anything at pin 2. Okay, at pin 2 we have 
about 7 millivolts. I have absolutely no idea where that's coming from. That should be at zero. At pin three, we should have about 6 volts. 6.37, so that's pretty good. Pin four, that should be ground. And we've got zero volts there. I think my head was getting in the way of the camera. Anyway, I'm going to put the chip in, do some more voltage reading tests. And we'll see what we get. I'm just going to do this in one shot. Make sure the power's off when I do this because I don't want to zap it. <laughs> Mum is having serious problems downstairs. Okay. Chips in. Right. I have a couple of spares just in case I fry this one, which I don't think I will, but turn the power on. I'm going to check the voltages. Okay. At pin 2, we have half of the supply voltage. At pin 3, we also have half of the supply voltage. Pin 6, we should have the same. Mm hmm. Well, that pin checks out. Pin 7, we should have the supply voltage of 12.8 volts. It's gone down to about 12.74, but that might just be my power supply. Well, I'm going to connect this up and see if it does anything. Well, I have it powered up now, and sad to say, it isn't working. But like a lot of my things, it's probably nothing major. Somehow, I don't know how, but we are getting DC at the output. If I put my meter probe right here on the output wire, you see we're getting almost full DC out there. I have absolutely no idea why that's happening. Just got to find out why there's some DC coming out of this wire here. And I will have solved the case. And in fact, I think I've already solved the case because I've just realized what I've done. I done did connect up the wrong wire fix that little up there so now the output wire is connected to the amplifier this time last time I had the microphone wire connected up and wondering why it wasn't doing anything but now if I touch the input wire we do get a buzz next thing to do is hook a microphone up to there and see if it actually does work well everybody I would like to inform you that this is a successful build. I have complete success. Got a working microphone preamp that uses a 741 chip running from a single rail power supply. And I've got to tell you, I turned this on and turned my amplifier up and I got s major squealing feedback out the speaker. Now if you can hear that, if I turn the volume up a little bit, going to see how much voltage I got at each end of this capacitor. Okay, so we have 11.64 there. 6.3 there, so that side is going to need to be positive when I use an electrolytic capacitor, which is what I'm going to do now. I have now changed that capacitor for a 4.7 microfarad electrolytic, taking good care to observe the polarity, of course. And as the microphone was getting a little bit more voltage than what I wanted it to, I've changed this capacitor, um, this resistor here to a 10k. Hasn't really lowered the microphone's voltage. It's gone down from about 11.4 or whatever it was to about 10 volts at the microphone now. Still a bit higher than what I wanted, but I don't think that's going to hurt it. And if you haven't guessed, yes, you are hearing from the preamp, directly from the preamp. And I must say, I think it sounds pretty good. It would sound better if I used a better microphone, but this one does have a bit of a tinny sound to it, but I'm going to demonstrate the filters working now. 
So let's turn on the high cut filter. Now you should be able to hear that the high frequencies are not as good anymore. Although, since this microphone seems to only pick up high frequencies, you probably don't hear anything at all right now. I'll just turn that off. Now I'll turn the low cut filter on. Well, this is with the low cut filter on, which will probably make this microphone sound even more tinny than it already is. Now I'm going to try it with both filters on. And I guess this is how it sounds with both filters on. Anyway, I'm pretty happy with this. This is a microphone preamp that uses a 741 op amp to do the actual amplifying, running from a single rail supply. Anyway, I'm quite happy with this and quite happy with the sound quality. Let's just turn the filters off so you can hear the full sound quality of the thing. I might change this resistor here to give it a little bit more gain. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to do that or not. But anyway, until next time, goodbye because I've only got about 10% left on my camera. Well, that's it for this episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop. Remember, if you like these videos, feel free to subscribe, you'll be glad you did, and tell your friends about Cool Dude Clem and his Electronic Workshop. And, if you want to see the previous episode of Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop, click on the box on the right. Or, if you want to see more of my videos, Click on me right now to visit my channel. That's just about it for now. I'll see you next time. Well, I won't see you next time. But anyway, until next time, goodbye.